<laughs> I've asked a couple of people about the uh, the Dublin trip. I think Andy, uh, Andy Griffin wasn't there with Gillespie and Shearer. I'm hoping you were, though. Well, the the big thing about that was, um, I know Keith tells it and tells it in his book, but he, he, he withholds information. <laughs> um, so I'm going to divulge it. <laughs> um, what had happened was, uh, Kenny Kenny was away, but he was meeting us, Kenny Daglish. And so Terry Mack took the lads to, to Dublin. Kenny, Kenny was coming in the next day. Terry Mack taking a group of lads on the drink, basically just carnage. You know for a fact carnage is just going to ensue. So we've cracked on, on, the, on in the airport. We're on the plane. We're getting to the hotel. Terry Mack's gone. Gaffer's going to get here. Uh, you know, at, at such and such a time, we'll have a meeting. So we've all gone out. And again, we, we don't go out in little groups. We all went out together. Now, we always used to play games. You know yourselves, you've been in like kind of groups where a few of the players have gone out. Sometimes you just stand next to the bar and have a couple of drinks. Sometimes you want to have a right good few drinks, but have a, have a laugh about them. So we used to play games, you know, and obviously the punishment was what was in the middle and it could have been any kind of concoction of drink. Uh, we used to play names of and buzz and all that kind of thing. You know them games, don't you? Mm. So Keith Gillespie, believe it or not, is actually very clever. Very clever, even though his nickname's Dizzy, but that's because of Dizzy Gillespie, trumpet player. <laughs> and um, we were playing this game, and at this game, it's absolutely paramount that you switched on early doors, because if you lose a few in a row, you're knackered, and you're just drinking constantly, and then it's like, good night, you're gone. And uh, Keith had had a couple of drinks, and he was he was quite tipsy. Keith At that time, Keith couldn't drink. He was piss poor. And, and he was already chewing, in all fairness, because... I think early on in the night, early on the day, sorry, because it was still early afternoon, I think he'd, he'd gone to loo and somebody hadn't hold the door for him and, he'd, he'd, and he, was just, he was just being awkward and he was one of these where he was just wanting to fight somebody and he'd kind of fight, he's soft as shite, to be quite honest. So we've played these games and, uh, and he kept on getting it wrong. So it wasn't going around, so we couldn't really get started because it wasn't going around. And Al was hammering him, battering him, calling him worse than rotten. And uh, anyway, Keith, on, on one time when Al's hammered him because he's getting it wrong, he's gone, he stood up and he went, listen, I'm, I'm swearing a lot. I don't, don't worry don't about it, to. it's fine. He went, listen, you fucking baldy bastard. He went, you call me one more time, me and you's going outside. And I was going, fucking sit down, you idiot, sit down. So we sat down, it must have gone round twice, and then it comes back to Keith, gets it wrong again. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, I've got a champagne cork top in my hand. And I've gone fucking hell dizzy and I've bounced it off the table and it could have gone anywhere, but it actually bounced and hit Keith right in the eye. <laughs> but quick as a flash, Shiro went, fucking hell, look at you. He says, you're the only Irishman that doesn't know where cork is. <laughs> <laughs> Just because it's a cork. Anyway, Keith's gone, that's it, fucking get up. Come on, outside now, outside. So I'm sitting with a lad called Des Hamilton. Remember Des Hamilton, the midfield player from uh, Bradford? And uh, we used to uh, we used to call Des Armadillo for some reason. But Des Hamilton, have you ever, ever watched the film Jumanji, the very first one? Do you know what all the animals when they run past and then you see the big fat rhino? Just... <laughs> <laughs> well, that was Des. <laughs> so Des says to me, "Went boy, what are you doing? Are you not going to go outside?" I went, I'm not, "No, I'm not." I says, "I'm at the embryo stage of a drinking session here." <laughs> I says, "I'm not going." I says, "That's Alan Shearer." I said, he's a world-renowned superstar. And I says, that's that stupid, bloody Irishman. I said, it's broad daylight. I said, they're not going to fight. They're not going to fight. I went, if you want to go, mate, crack on. I'm sitting here, I'm having me pint. Des goes, literally 30 seconds later, I hear the rhino. He's hit him. He's hit him. <laughs> he's only fucking hit him. So I've, oh, so I've ran up and he's all standing over Keith and Keith is out and there's claret all over the floor. And I've looked at Al, I've gone, what have you done? He won't have hit him. I won't well, I can see that. <laughs> I said, well, he says, what, well, he tried to hit us, so I've hit him. I went, look, you go, just go. I said, I'll, I'll, I'll look after Keith. I think Rob Lee's took Al away. <clears throat> I've looked after Keith. Now, just a little bit uh, after that, uh, away from the story, there was me, Warren Barton, Rob Lee, and John Beresford. We did this big do at the Lancastrian suite. There's about 600 people there, and it was a Q&A. And the very first question, it was a Roman mic. Um, who's got any questions? Everybody's put their hand up. The mic's gotten to this bloke. Uh, Warren, Warren Barton, what happened between Keith Gillespie and, and Rob Elliott? Bear in mind, we've been told, say, no, say nothing. 
And Warren Barton went, I wasn't there, but the boy was. So I thought, fuck it, right? Do you know what? I'll tell the story. <clears throat> so I told the story. So I told the story and I'm driving back. Now, Rob Lee was there. Now, Rob Lee, sometimes, Rob Lee was just ridiculous because I've always sort of said, and, and Rob like this, if you actually see Rob Lee in full, please take a picture and send it to me on Twitter because normally his head and his legs are so far up Shearer's arse, you didn't really see. <laughs> it's embarrassing. <coughs> so I'm driving home and I see Shearer comes up, my phone rings, Shearer. And I know for a fact Rob Lee's been on the phone straight away. Alan, 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 Steve, I've been telling stories. <laughs> so I'm going, hello. He went, you macking bastard. I said, what's the matter? He went, you told the story, you told the story. I said, relax, man, relax. He said, what do you mean, relax? I said, I told the story. I said, Keith came for you. I said, you ducked, boom, hit him. Like Tyson dropped him. I said, the full 600 people were going, she rose, she rose. <laughs> he went, what the? I went, I. He went, well, you keep on telling the fucking story. <laughs> <laughs> So I've told, I've told that story. So anyway, when I get back to the hotel, I've just told the lads, like, oh, listen, he's being hit by some drunk person coming past. Rob Lee tells a story. I've told the, uh, the, guard, the, the, the Guardia, um, I've, he's being hit by a drunk driver. How on earth am I supposed to know he's being hit by a drunk driver? I don't know, but that's what they tell. But Keith, Keith tells that story as well, that he was hit by a drunk driver. And he, he says, how thick Steve Howie, by the way. So I thought, all right, well, I'll fell you. Because when I was in the ambulance with Keith Gillespie, uh, uh, back to the hospital and he hasn't put this in his book and he doesn't see it when he does after dinners or anything like that he forgets to mention when he's in the ambulance even though he's knocked the f out and he's got blood all over, over him he's actually shit and pissed himself as well <laughs> and he forgets to mention that <laughs> so that's mentioned <laughs> now how stupid how are you keith gillespie <laughs> I think that could have sold another 10,000 copies, that story. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fucked up there, Keith. He went, I've got a current England international wearing a fucking emu costume, <laughs> and I've got one of the best videos in the country wearing a fucking tutu. <laughs> I went, I'm not going to bench. He went, I think you are, like. I went, I'm fucking not. And he went, it's Terry. And I went, Terry you? And he went, Terry Venables. And I went, fuck off. And I put, <laughs> and I put the phone down. I weed in it and Stoney shit in it. <laughs> but Eileen Drury basically picked the squad. <laughs> Look, you could see a car pulled in the Valier by with some blue lights flashing with a police car behind. And it will be the physio being pulled out of the car <laughs> with his hands on the bonnet. I had three years left in my contract, which was worth a good couple of million. And I just went, you know what? Stick your money up your ass. I walked out the door and I didn't really play again after that, to be fair.